Cool. Drugs for every condition. But seriously, hey guys, uh, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix, and today we're talking about chemical straitjackets. So I saw this uh, this thing at work the other day on the um, on the TV screen. There's this thing where they, they throw these random adverts and little messages and affirmations for the day. And one of them was saying that there has been discovered a link between creativity and happiness and a sense of well-being. And that people that are more creative than usual than most people generally lead more fulfilling and happy lives and they're more optimistic. And I kind of, I didn't really chuckle inside, but I found this kind of amusing because, you know, when I think, okay, well now there's discovered all of a sudden, that apparently there's a link between creativity and happiness. You know, I can't help but think, well, if that's the case, then how come when people uh, express a real creative edge in schools, you know, right-brained people that need to be active and hands-on and involved instead of just sitting down and, you know, regurgitating information off a board, you know, whenever you have a student that actually needs to create new information and not just repeat the old and actually needs to get involved and doing stuff, they label you or they diagnose you with having a condition, generally ADD, ADHD, attention deficit disorder or hyper disorder, and they prescribe you with uh, Dexies or Dexamphetamines, which helps, you know, turn your right brain creativity into pure left brain logic and cold dead control. So, what doesn't make sense to me is if there's a link between creativity and happiness, then why the fuck? would you prescribe drugs? And I've got a friend who's eight years old when he started being prescribed just because he was excessively creative, right? Out of control with his creativity. And he didn't want to just sit there all day, every day, listening to bullshit pro uh, propaganda and con social conditioning, blah, on the board. He actually wanted to create stuff and get involved doing different things. Because of that, his parents got him on Dexies from the age of eight. He didn't have a choice in it. And he, he regrets it very much that that happened. And he stopped as soon as he, as he was aware of the effects of it, around 18, 20, 21. And you know, I, I've, I've heard of cases where children are put onto dexamphetamines and other prescriptions, Ritalin or whatever, at a, at a much younger age. I'm talking like five, six, you know. And for what? Now how easy is it to go into a doctor's office have a brief interview and get a prescription for dexamphetamines these days. I mean, what, just because you're a little active? Just because you're not the typical quiet, dumb brain drone that they, that they seem to expect of children these days? Just because you, you display a bit of wit and, you know, you're a bit active and engaging? I mean, imagine all of the artists and all of the great actors and, and writers, you know, and various creative people that we never even got to see reach their full potential because they had that potential snuffed out by these drugs that were specifically designed to shut down the right side of their brain from functioning too excessively so that they are left with just this left brain logic side working, you know, and more focus. Maybe a lot less inspiration, but they have more focus. And they can do a lot better just sitting there and re regurgitating information from a blackboard, which is great apparently and you know I look at this whole situation and I can't help but think it's a little bit sad you know especially when children don't have a choice in the matter and who they are is greatly altered and determined by these other people above them who apparently for some unexplained reason seem to have a better idea of what's good for them seem to have a better idea of who they should be I've heard of schools that they've made specifically for right-brained people, creative people, and these people flourish in these schools. And I like to think that that's a much healthier and a lot more uh, respectable alternative for how to, how to treat people with ADD. Um, they're putting them in a chemical straitjacket and making them stupid, pretty much, and uh, subservient, and just dull and docile. So that's my thoughts on that for the day. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's probably not going to make a difference to those that it should make a difference with, that it needs to make a difference with. 
because they're probably disconnected from their right side of their brain enough for all of this shit just to go through their head and out the other ear. Um, but yeah, if you find that your kid's a little bit active in class and maybe has a bit of problems paying attention and it's got a lot of energy and needs to move around a lot, here's a better idea than giving him a chemical straitjacket, yeah? And changing his chemistry. Maybe get him involved in like a sports club, you know? Get him actively uh, participating in some active sport, yeah? Get him to write, get him to express all of these ideas in his mind, get him to be creative, give him an art class, give him fucking a pottery class, or give her dancing lessons, whatever. There's so many alternatives that are progressive and it encourages a child to grow and develop their talents and their skills innate. Instead of you trying to change what's innately present, what's innately natural, and instead of trying to change what naturally inspires them and change what they want to do just so that they can fit some idea of what you think they should be. Which I guarantee you is never going to match up. It's never going to be of greater value than who the person is actually without your manipulations and without your chemical straitjackets. Your idea of them is never going to match up to who they were meant to be and they can tell you who they're meant to be better than you can or some doctor.